Welcome back into live now from Fox. I'm Lexi Petrovich. Thanks for being with us on this Sunday morning as we continue to bring you all of this continuing coverage, especially when it comes to the destruction in Maui following the wildfires there. You're taking a live look there right now. The death toll now at 93 and unfortunately officials do believe that number will continue to grow as the search and rescue efforts continue. Many people still missing. We want to now bring in Brian Stern, who's a combat veteran with a Purple Heart Medal. Right now he is in Maui rescuing people. He is also a part of Project Dynamo. And Brian, thank you so much for joining us here. First and foremost, thank you for your service. And as I mentioned, you are in Maui now. We talked to you just a few days ago while you were on your way to Maui. But now that you're there, tell us about what you're seeing. Uh, my team and I have been operating on the ground here uh, for a few days already. I think we're on day three or four, I think, uh, that all blurs together. Uh, we were in Lahaina all day yesterday, and um, it's nothing short of um, indescribable, frankly. It looks like a like a meteor hit or a, or a bomb went off. If you look at imagery of what Hiroshima and Nagasaki looked like after, after um, the, we dropped nuclear weapons on them, um, that's what it looks like. It's it's but it's it, it looks like a big ashtray which sounds a little um uh insensitive but that's really what it is it, it's it's cars are melted everything's melted uh so it's it's really 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 terrible so what do the search and rescue efforts look like at this time and and while you talk about how horrific this destruction is we're going to show viewers some of these aerial views here but the search and rescue efforts describe to us what you and your team are doing on a daily basis so we've been we've been doing this uh, uh, we've been doing a lot we've been doing uh, we've been doing uh, air medevacs we've been doing air supply drops via helicopter and uh, we've also been operating on the ground trying to find survivors of course and also we did a lot of work uh, we did, we're doing a lot of work with pets uh, that that um, couldn't get out and were left behind who are either strays or or didn't make it so um, it's pivoting from a rescue operation to a recovery operation and we're on the ground going house to house and door to door and uh, looking for people who have either registered on our website at projectdynamo.org that's also where your viewers can go to donate these helicopters do not fly themselves they cost money um, but uh, uh, door to door looking for people who registered on our website and also people that haven't registered on our website. Frankly, there's not a lot left. And at this point, those that survived survived and those that didn't survive probably didn't survive. Uh, we're, we're at that we're at that moment in time. And Brian, what about the federal response? What are you seeing as far as the aid that's been coming in and, and everyone who has been, like you said, just joining in, banding together to help? Uh, uh, for us, we we uh, we've been we were in Lahaina all day yesterday. We didn't see much of it. I'm not saying it's not there, just it's not where we are. At least um, we've we saw some National Guard guys at checkpoints, and we saw um, we saw some National Guard guys on body details and some of that that kind of thing. We saw uh, Nevada Task Force guys who are brave. They um, they were uh, uh, we saw them kind of coming and going a little bit, but on the streets where we were operating. Uh, we, we didn't see we didn't see much we didn't see much uh, uh, of a response uh, at all actually we have we yeah. as an example we haven't seen this we haven't seen a single army helicopter flying in the sky a Chinook or a Blackhawk or, or that kind of thing we haven't seen people bring you know army helicopters bringing generators let's say those kind of, we haven't seen that a whole lot so I'm not saying it's not happening but it, at least not where we're operating in Lahaina yeah, and you know, Brian, there's always so many stories that come from tragedies like this. I'm sure you've spoken to so many people on the grounds there. Tell us a little bit about what people are saying, their reactions to the help that you're providing, and really anything that might stand out to you from what they've told you so far. I think on the ground, you know, everyone's very thankful, of course. Um, everyone's very thankful. They're very happy that we're here. We're actually being hosted by a family on the island who uh, took my team and I in. There's, there's a bunch of us here. Um, uh, so people are very thankful. My case managers who are working with the families, they're talking to thousands of people trying to find their loved ones. A lot of those stories are extremely heartbreaking, extremely heartbreaking. Um, uh, so, you know, it, all these things are terrible. That's why it's called a disaster. 
right? Uh, we spoke to a, a guy who who was a fireman, worked with the fire department, whose um, whose crew took 45 bodies out of the water of people who jumped in, and lots of reason to believe some of those people couldn't swim, and uh, so they jumped in the water out of desperation. Pretty terrible. That's analogous to jumping out of the you know out of Tower One on the morning of 9/11. Nowhere to go, surrounded by fire, and they did the best that they could with what they had, and then and didn't survive. So, um, some of these stories are really, really, really terrible. Really terrible. It, it really is just heartbreaking. It looks like we have some video from you and your team, Brian, to show viewers here, and this is exactly what you talked about earlier. Just the state of what's going on here. So, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing and 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 what comes forward from here. Um, so uh, the video that you're seeing is us uh, providing some water to a bunch of puppies that uh, that we found. Um, they, they uh, I don't think that they had an owner anymore, and we couldn't take them, so we dropped some water into a thing and uh, and fed the puppies. We uh, we love our four-legged friends as much as two-legged friends. Um, I've never met a puppy I didn't like. So um, uh, you know the way forward is going to turn into pain. A lot of the just like 9-11 and I was as you know as a 9-11 first responder this is going to be just like that a lot of people hoping and praying that their family made it and then receiving disappointing news at some point once the bodies are identified and the parts are identified and a lot of them are going to be very difficult it's going to have to be through DNA because these bodies are going to not be um, recognizable so that process is going to be absolutely terrible absolutely terrible it's going to look like 9-11 and then it turns into a big cleanup a uh, big cleanup there's not um sadly there's not much to there's not much left so it can it can be cleaned up in mass uh whole blocks don't exist anymore other than the concrete slab so it's really just a big bulldozer operation and then a, and then a hazardous waste which is terrible you know it's a very it's a big shame this is a very beautiful part of the world yeah, it's been so horrible, so tragic to see so many popular landmarks there, too. And just, I mean, the amount of people who have lost everything in this has been so difficult to wrap your head around. And, and for us as viewers watching this through a screen, it looks just tragic. But to be on the ground there, I can't imagine how much more difficult it is to actually see that in person. And Brian, you've done so much work internationally helping people going to all of these different places to provide assistance. Tell us a little bit about what stands out to you in particular about Maui and the recovery operations there. Um, uh, there's a there's a number of things. One, we we st we started getting after it. We had helicopters flying uh, very quickly on the morning of day one. As soon as the winds allowed, we had we had birds in the air, and our team was surging forward, uh, doing conducting rescue operations. So um, being able to to surge capacity on an island was um, difficult for us. Uh, we did a little. We did that in Hurricane Ian with boats, but we hadn't done it from the air before. Uh, I've been doing a lot of talking on uh, different venues about Taiwan. And to, in my mind, Ohana Safe, which is what we call the Maui operation, this is a perfect dress rehearsal for Taiwan. So being able to get helicopters and aircraft onto a target on an island nation in the Pacific and start bringing people out from where they from a bad place to a better place, uh, being able to do that uh, was a huge challenge for my team. Huge challenge, but being able to be, but being able to show that it was possible gives us light at the end of the tunnel for things like Taiwan. With respect to Maui specifically, I, you know it's tough because it's America. You know the, 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 this is a U.S. state, Hawaii, um, but the the but the people here are are Hawaiian. So you know it, the, there's there's cultural nuances here that we didn't really understand for a little bit, and um, some good, some bad. But those cultural nuances, the good parts of those cultural nuances, we were able to observe firsthand. And that was really, really, really touching in this, in this really terrible time. Really terrible. It, it really is. And it's such a long road to recovery, too, as we think ahead. So moving forward, Brian, how much longer do you plan to be there? Do you anticipate Project Dynamo will be there? And uh, also, just because there's been so much that we've been discussing here, if you could have viewers take one thing away from them from this conversation to keep with them what would you want that to be the big thing that i and uh, again um, i say this all the time is that the nonprofit world the ngo world and the private sector will always outperform government every single time um, we we haven't seen army helicopters in the air and we've done many 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 air operations in just a few short days that doesn't mean that they're not here 
but but I would argue that that um, the private sector and nonprofits like Project Dynamo, where we are entirely donor funded on a shoestring budget, can still outpace and outperform most 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 of government, certainly with respect to bureaucracy. So as far as being able to save lives quickly, efficiently, by any means necessary, doing what needs to do, we are not political, we're not politicians, we're not Republicans, we're not Democrats, we're Americans, that's it. Being able to ha take that approach to, to saving lives is a is a is a, is always going to outpace uh, the public sector for sure. Um, that's the big one. So projectdynamo.org, our shoestring budget needs your help. Um, uh, um, uh, as far as the way ahead and how long we're going to stay, I think we're going to start winding down operations here real soon. We're going to do a couple of missions today, but but honestly, we you know we're we're coming into uh, we're coming into a point in this timeline where survivors. Uh, this won't. This is going to pivot from rescue to recovery, which is very sad. Uh, and the humanitarian aid part, uh, that'll that'll continue. That'll still need to be. And as federal resources show up, that'll sort itself out as well. So I'm I'm hopeful for the future, but at the same time, it's going to be very, 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 very painful. I certainly expect that body count to hit in the in the high triple digits, maybe even touch a thousand, maybe, maybe. Wow. Yeah. And that's, and that's the fear right now is this number continues to climb. We keep hearing that it's likely going to keep rising. And I mean, 93 in itself is hard, is a hard number to grasp. So to think about it growing is, is really unimaginable. Um, Brian, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for the work that you and your team are doing during this incredibly difficult time and, and for joining us to tell us about it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We need your help. Thank you for having me.